hot on the heels of the video I did the other day on the Givy tank bag, which I'll stick a card to up here somewhere, so you can take a look at that too. And I'm off on a tour on Thursday, May the 2nd, which I mentioned on that video and the reason that I got the bag, to Wales. Now, obviously, when you go on a tour, you're not able to fix the weather. You're going, well, we're going, come what may. Whereas up till now, I've managed to take my rides when it's been dry, when the weather's been fair, and I've not had to worry particularly about the weather. Now that I am concerned about the rain and the weather, I'm needing to look at a couple of areas where I think BMW miss a trick. I mean, well, I say miss a trick, the aftermarket people love it, but effectively that bike has been pretty much the same machine for the last 15 years at least, and it has two pretty major and basic faults. The first one is the front mudguard doesn't extend far enough at the back to stop crud throwing itself into the front of the engine and also piling up in the front engine pan. And that's disappointing. I've noticed since riding the bike, I get obviously dirt and, and mud. I'm not too worried about that, uh, but I do get quite a lot of tar splashes. They're difficult to remove. And I suspect I will also get some stone chips eventually. So um, I'm gonna take some action on that. The other one that concerns me is at the back of the machine, the suspension unit has no protection whatsoever from water, dirt, stones and everything else. Now, my bike was brand new uh, in November, so it's a, an R 1250 GS and it's been garaged and I've only really ridden it on dry days. I've perhaps been caught out a couple of times. It's done 3000 miles, I think now. And, and the other day, I was cleaning off the Winters ACF 50 and I did notice that there were just a couple of pin sort of rust marks on that back suspension unit already. So I looked in the dealers and when you look in the dealers you can see that quite a number of the second hand machines of that ilk do have the white paint on that suspension unit touched up with a brush. So it's not a huge issue, but I just think it's something BMW should have done to help protect the bike. And at the end of the day, with the, qu with the quantity of their production, the two injection mouldings that I'm about to show you would truly cost them less than five euro. Obviously, what we have here is the famous mudsling rear guard. And I've also got the same Machine Art Moto front fender extender, the Avant, I think they call it. They've both come from Nippy Normans in the UK. So those of you in the UK who have a BMW, I'm sure know Nippy Norman. He's the exclusive UK distributor of Machine Art Moto products. And at the moment, he's got a deal on the pair of these units. So the Avant front fender extender and the Mudslinger rear uh, suspension protector, the sort of extension to the back mudguard at I think £169.99 sterling. I think if you buy them individually, they're 199 quid. Now, I'll not dwell too much on it because I'm sure Nippy Norman isn't profiteering on this. And obviously there is some design, art, um, uh, R&D, all of those types of things for Machine Art Moto to, to develop these items. But once they're in production, as you'll see when I get them out of the box, they, they are just very, re really very cheap uh, plastic injection mouldings. They do, however, work, proven to work, a lot of good reviews on them. I'll give a review a little bit later once I've actually used it. But certainly I'm hoping that the rear one will stop the water up the right hand leg and protect the suspension unit and the front one will protect the front of the engine casing and mud and such like gathering uh, underneath the engine pan. So we'll do a very quick unboxing. Just out of interest as well, you should be aware that the front fender will reduce the gap between obviously the mud guard and the front of the engine. So if you've got any engine plates at the front of that, protection engine plates at the front, you should go onto the Machine Art Moto website. They have a list of ones that it works with. I'm pretty sure it works with the Wunderlich one, which is again Nippy Normans. Uh, I think it works with the Motec one and it works with the BMW one, but there's certainly a few they list where the clearance has gone. So obviously your, your front fender will now hit that guard as you, as you maneuver back and forth. And equally on the mudslinger at the back, 
it only works with certain types of tyres. Now it does work, my bike is only ever really used on the road anyway, but it does work with most road tyres and certainly it works with the standard uh, fitment for the last couple of years which have been the um, Michelin Anarchy and the uh, Battle Axe, the Goodyear Battle Axe which is what's actually fitted to mine. But certainly if you've got any other tyres, again, check on the Machine Art Moto site and just check that your tyres are okay and the clearance is still okay, otherwise you'll find that it does rub the mud sling. And certainly if you're fitting knobblies to the machine, you should check them out because the profile of those is that much deeper. Made in, well, certainly uh, Machine Art Moto are an American company. Whether these are made in America would be debatable. So this is the larger of the two units, which is the Mud Sling trademark. If I call it a Mud Slinger, I do apologise. Mud Sling, um, and it is a trademark, so I should get it right. It's very simple injection moulding, very simple plastic injection moulding, and very simple fitment. I've got a feeling that this slot here will go over the blade that sits just in front of the shock absorber, and then there's four holes here, and you get supplied with four cable ties. Now, that may seem fairly basic, but cable ties, perfectly adequate. There's no weight in this, it's not gonna hang. It's supported at the back, it's supported at the front. And certainly when I go on a tour or even anywhere on the bike, I always take cable ties anyway, because there's a number of things that are, that are held together on cable ties or, or tied away with cable ties, or cable ties can often help things hang on just to get home. So, so that's the mud sling. Then in the second bag here we have what they call the Avant or the Fender Extender, again Machine Art Moto, and that's the unit here. The thing I like about both of these units is neither of them require you to drill holes into the standard machine. So we've already said this one, the mud sling is held on with cable ties. The Avant Fender Extender has two pinching brackets that go through these holes here, one here and one here and they actually pinch the old mudguard or the existing mudguard that's staying on. And then again, the blade of the back of the mudguard fits into this slot to support it. So that's the reason, there's, there's no doubt, we can complain all we like about the price, but there's no doubt that these are thought through. They do have very, very good ratings. And at the end of the day, you pay your money and you take your choice. There are several different ones of these you can buy without doubt. Some of them require you to drill a hole in the front mudguard. For me, that's not really acceptable because if I come to sell the bike, I don't really want it to have two extra holes in the, in the mudguard number one. And equally, it's quite possible I may want to take some of these accessories off if I'm going to buy another 1250 or, or whatever follows it on. Or I may wish to sell these, of course, secondhand as not part of the bike. So anything you can swap back again is perfectly ideal. So. That's the reason I've gone for these, as I say, 169 quid, 199 quid if you buy them separately. Should be pretty easy to fit. We'll find out in a second when we get out by the bike. Okay, so here's the problem that we have. And as you can see here with the bike on its center stand, you can see there, I cleaned it only the other day and there's quite a bit of crud on the front of there and it gathers on here as well, um, just because this is too short. So. And how this is going to go is very simply, this will slide into place like so, so it looks nice and contoured. The blade here is fitted in. And then all we'll do is get one of the brackets, and here's a bracket here. And that literally goes the back side of here, and this clamps on the fender on the inside. So like so, and then a Torx 25 fastener. So very, very simple fitment. I'll just wind that in very gently to start with. It's got a self-locking um, nut on the back of the bracket, so it shouldn't come undone. We'll just go to the other side and fit that. There. And as you can see, or hopefully you can see, it does reduce the gap here because obviously the existing mudguard stops just north of the BMW logo there so it drops down much much lower to protect all of this area but you can see I've still got plenty of clearance. Now on to the mud sling at the back. Okay so this hopefully demonstrates the problem at the rear and what we have here is obviously the the tyre here and there's this massive gap 
between the mudguard, the, the BMW fitted mudguard, and effectively this splash guard. So water comes up here, hits the splash guard to a degree, but still comes all the way over here and equally fires up this side of the bike, getting everything up above here wet. So that's what we're trying to address with the mud slinger. And in fact, when I spoke earlier about how this would fit, I thought it fitted over this shoe here at the suspension unit. I've got that completely wrong. It actually drops down and then pulls upwards and secures itself on the blade of the bottom of the existing mud guard. Now I think right, so this is where the mud slinger is going to go. I've cleaned off the bottom of the inside of the mud guard here and the outside of the mud guard here. Um, and obviously cleared down behind it. You don't need to remove the back wheel for this. All it simply does is runs itself down here until you get below the blade of the existing mudguard, which is just here. I'll maybe show you that once it's fitted. And then just with a little bit of maneuvering, that blade, like so, will clip in. So you can see now through here, hopefully, Here's the blade of the existing mudguard up against its stop, so it's all nice and centrally located. And as you can see, exactly where this is going to be cable tied in a moment. So the same as the other side, I'm pushing the cable from inside the mudguard at the back first, bringing it up here. And then I'm pushing it back down the other side like so, so that the notch of the cable tie and the cut will be nice and tidy and inside the wheel arch. And that's it. So just a quick run round the bike. You can see hopefully down inside here that the blade is engaged. We have the two cable ties this side holding the mud sling in place. And then if we look the other side of the bike, you'll see the two cable ties either side of the exhaust hanger. And again, the mud sling fits over here. So hopefully you can see that that's now completely closed off the gap that was there before should protect the suspension unit and keep the rider and passenger's right legs dry. So if you've liked that, hit the like, subscribe if you feel you'd like to, and hit the bell if you want to be reminded of any of these that I do in the future. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.